I'd like to thank everyone for their support uh, over this year. We made some good progress here in Indiana County in terms of our local elected officials. Uh, we've uh, we won a lot of races, believe it or not, this year in the uh, in the heart of rural Appalachia, uh, Trump country. We have had some significant numbers of success. So for, for Indiana Area School Board, uh, we got Tammy Blank elected uh, to the Indiana Area School Board. Uh, Tammy was unable to come here tonight because there is a uh, concert that her daughter's performing in uh, for Indiana Area. For Ernest Borough Council, we've got elected uh, Paige Shannon up in Ernest. For Indiana Borough Council, we had a clean sweep again for Indiana Borough Council because there was nobody running against our Democratic and progressive candidates. So uh, this year we elected Peter Broad, Sarah Steelman, Ben Ford, Poom Taylor, Sarah Stewart, and Casey Newell. So that's six for six for Indiana Borough Council. <laughs> So the Indiana Borough Council, or heart of the county seat, has done uh, a tremendous job. We have the largest solar co-op in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We have a bike trail that's now running to the heart of downtown Indiana through uh, uh, connecting to the Hootabug Trail. Uh, we have a parking garage that, that accepts, believe it or not, credit cards in 2019, <laughs> all thanks to the Indiana Borough Council. Uh, we got James Smith available, uh, elected to our county auditor position, and we have a we had a valiant attempt, uh, but an unsuccessful uh, election in terms of Jessica Smith running for Indiana Area School Board. But she's feeling good enough that she might want to try this uh, this thing again in a couple years. So if you, all things considered, the Indiana, Indiana Bly candidates, at least how I'm counting them, uh, went nine, nine to one this year, nine wins and one losses. So that's a pretty good record in terms of, uh, in terms of baseball or uh, however you, however you uh, count those things. <laughs> So, uh, so I'd also like to recognize any other elected officials or candidates here uh, this evening. We have one in the back who's running for Chris Dush's seat. So uh, thank you very much for coming, and uh, we're hoping that we can get a good successor to, uh, to Chris Dush. As I was saying earlier, it's a pretty low bar for that seat, so, so thanks for coming. Um, and then uh, we'd like to, you know, it's important to make change where change is possible. So, so here in the uh, in rural Appalachia in Indiana County, it just seems like it's getting more and more difficult to win progressives and Democrats for office. Uh, but, uh, but if you look at the small, I think there's two areas that where where we can really make a difference. One is our smaller elected uh, municipalities. So you're not talking the the House race, the congressional race, or the countywide races necessarily, but we can enact real change at these smaller levels. Uh, we have 12 out of 12 progressives on Indiana Borough Council. We just got David Janicek elected to Blairsville Borough Council. This is where you can really affect change on a local level and serious change and, and get these people running uh, and maybe they'll be, uh, you know, five years, ten years from now, they'll be able to take the next step up uh, to, to a higher office. The second opportunity is voter registration. So um, so this coming year, Indiana Valley is going to put a serious effort into voter registration, um, and especially at IUP. IUP, we have over 10,000 students at IUP, and Indiana and voter registration on campus is a nonpartisan effort. But one thing that we know is traditionally IUP campus votes two to one for the Democratic candidate. So although here in Trump country, in the county, Trump's going to win re-election probably by two to one in the county. But in Indiana, but the two campus precincts, there I'm going to predict, they're going to vote two to one for the Democratic nominee, whoever that Democratic nominee is. So our best opportunity is to register as many students as possible at IUP as we can. We're going to do that a couple different ways. Um, one is tabling on campus. Uh, with the IUP College Democrats. Another is with the nonpartisan IUP Votes Organization, of which I'm an advisor. And third is working with partners such as the NAACP and UU the Vote at the Unitarian Church and, and get out the vote in a, in a nonpartisan manner on campus. And that's going to be very, um, very, uh, very impactful, I think. 
One thing we have on our side this year is the new voter registration laws here in, in the Commonwealth. So if you all remember Tom Corbett, he tried to enact voter registration, which would have disenfranchised people from the elderly, people of color, college students, and they, they ma manufactured a voter registration impersonation crisis which didn't exist because they wanted fewer people to vote. Well, Tom Wolf got elected, and what do we have? We have, all of a sudden, online voter registration. Uh, he's actually wanting more people to vote. And, and what's passed this last year was the, was the largest expansion of voter rights in the Commonwealth since the 1930s. What we have now is no excuse uh, mail-in voting uh, for the first time ever in the Commonwealth. And this is big. It's a 50-day voting window where no longer do you have to say you're disabled or out of the area uh, in order to vote. Uh, we're also, the voter registration deadline has also moved from 30 days before the election, which it's been since, since I can remember, to 15 days. So we have 15 more days for re voter registration. 